And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, the story of a school teacher who finds the unexpected on a Mediterranean cruise. We call it Beirut by Sunrise. So now, starring Miss Mary Jane Croft, here is tonight's suspense play, Beirut by Sunrise. Darling sister, as I told you last, this Mediterranean cruise just hasn't been what I expected. We've sailed from Beirut, but I'm still shaking. After yesterday, honestly, I was positive I'd never see this good old ship again. It's hard to believe my trip to the Near East began as disappointingly as it did. That first stop at Port Said was dreadful. Not that I thought there'd be perfumed nights, but I was hoping I'd feel a little of the mystery of it all. When we left for Beirut, the only stimulating thing was the new dinner companion at our table, a Mr. Haroun. At least, he looked interesting compared to that awfully dull Frank Grady I'd been forced to sit along with until now. Frank Grady, Mr. Haroun. Mr. Grady? Uh, this is Miss Gideon, Mildred Gideon. How do you do? Miss Gideon, charmed. You are both Americans? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, we're Americans. I'm from Akron, Ohio. Miss Gideon's from North Dakota. Teaches school, third grade. How charming. A Haroun. That name's a... Persian. Oh, yes, of course. They say uh, Beirut's really something to see. Beirut. One should see it at sunrise for the first time. A thrilling sight. Oh, swell. Uh, we hit there in the night. Uh, how about a sunrise date, teacher? Well, I really hadn't planned on it. I... Well, it's okay by me. Can't say I didn't offer. Well, uh, Beirut, here we come. <laughs> Beirut, here we come. Honestly, he just made me wince. Companions are half the fun, but really, you couldn't commune with anything with Frank Grady around. I was darned if I'd share Beirut by sunrise with him. It was around five when I woke. I felt a little thrill when I realized the engines had stopped and we were there. It was dawn when I reached the deck. I was alone. It was marvelously still, like everything holding its breath. Then, just a crack of sunlight and spires of minarets began to appear. Then domes, the whole sweeping outline of the city, rising out of the night. It was just pure Omer Khayyam. I floated with it, completely carried away by the sight in that magic quiet. Ah, then, wouldn't you know something had to spoil it? Down on the dock below, some man had come stumbling out of one of those shadows. Honestly, just reeling. It was still pretty dark, but I could see he was a sailor. An American sailor, coming toward the ship. He looked up, I saw his face. It was filled with pain. Then he swayed and fell. He tried to drag himself. I don't know why I did it, but... There just wasn't anyone else around any place, and I was positive he needed help. What happened to you? Can I help? Dead sailor. What? He... Message. Listen. Yes? Sultan's turret. Yes? Fifteen step. Tell it to... Tell it... <laughs> Then I saw it, a knife buried in his back. He just died. I turned and ran. Oh, oh, oh I'm terribly sorry. Oh, you are American. What are you running from, mademoiselle? Down the street, back there on the dock. Oh, are you a police? Yes, mademoiselle, Beirut police. I presume you are from the passenger ship? Yes, that's right. On the dock, there's a dead man, a sailor. There's a knife in his back. Yes, of course. Now, what is it you wish me to do? Do? Well, he's just lying there, dead. Isn't it a little early for dead bodies, mademoiselle? A sailor? Uh, Baron, you're sure he's not just drunk? Drunk? I told you there's a knife in his back. Well, you could take a look, you know. You can almost see it from here. Please, I don't mean to doubt you, but... Look, I'm only telling you what I saw. I didn't imagine this. It just happened. The poor man's dead. Ah, American tourists. All right, mademoiselle, I shall accompany you to the dead body. Well... 
Now, you see? I was standing right up there on the deck. Yes, I see. Now, where exactly? Just at the edge of those packing cases. I don't want to look. Mademoiselle. Oh, please. I, I couldn't there bear to look. There is nothing here. What? This is... This is the exact place. You are sure? I swear they must have moved him. They... Well, someone... Mademoiselle, when a man is drunk... He wasn't drunk, believe me. There was a knife in his back. Then there should be blood. There is no blood. Look, I saw it. Well, possibly the shadow. I swear I saw it. He was dead. With a body, there is little we can do. You agree? Yes, but... I... You don't believe I saw anything, do you? Something, yes. Beirut is a modern city, but it still has charm. Sometimes a visitor is overwhelmed. Well, I don't understand it. I'm not wearing my glasses, but... Well, it was so real. Well, their report will be filled. Now, if I may escort you back to the ship. All right. I don't understand it, but all right. I felt absolutely ridiculous. The policeman couldn't help thinking I was only a giddy, excited tourist. Saying any more would just make it worse. I looked back at the place... It was broad daylight now, and everything did look different. Well, there wasn't anything to do except try and push it out of my mind if I was going to enjoy Beirut at all. When I got to my cabin, I put some cold water on my face and went up for breakfast. Hey, you're late this morning, teacher. Oversleep, did you? No, no. I was just buying some film for my camera at the ship store. Good morning, Mr. Haroon. Good morning. Well, by route, here we are. Hey, see the sunrise, teacher. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion, Mr. Haroon. It was really something. Did uh, you see the sunrise, Mr. Grady? Well, sure, through my porthole. Not from the deck? No, I just got out of bed, took a look, went back to sleep. Oh. It looks like a pretty good town, a little on a gaudy side. You're signed up for the tour, aren't you? I haven't yet. Well, you better hurry. Are you going on the tour, Mr. Haroon? I am familiar with Beirut. Oh, well, then you must know those little out-of-the-way places that tourists ordinarily don't see. Some? The Street of the Seven Nightingales? Oh, I'm just dying to see something like that. Well, you know, tours are so commercial. <laughs> you want to see some of that hoochie-coochie stuff? Why, teacher, That's I... not what I mean, Mr. Grady. If you were at all sensitive, you'd... Oh. You understand, don't you, Mr. Haroon? A touch of Omar Khayyam. Oh, that's it. That's it exactly, to be a part of it. <laughs> to see and feel antiquity with someone who... I could show you, Miss Gideon. You must think I'm rather forward, but... But unfortunately, I have business. Oh, oh, I see. The tour is really excellent. It will not disappoint you. I have taken it myself. Sure, there's still time to sign up. We'll have a big time, just like Port said. Well, I guess I'd better go get my things. a girl. I'll go put your name down. See you this evening, Mr. Haroon? You will have a nice time, I am sure. Yes. Well, goodbye. Meet you at the gangplank, teacher. Now, hurry up. The bazaar of the Hussat LD. 300 years old. Now, you'll have a half hour to observe the interesting native handiwork and uh, make purchases. There's yeah, some joint, just like a Hollywood set, eh, teacher? My name is Mildred Gideon, Mr. Grady. Oh, for sure. Hey, get, get a load of those shoes they're selling. Now, wouldn't you get the razz if you clumped around home in those? It's the style here. Well, sure, I realize that, but well, wouldn't you get the razz? I think I'll buy a pair. Hey, sorry. <laughs> The marketplace of Rashamir, 500 years old, a former slave market. You will have a half hour to observe the interesting native handiwork and make... Slave fun. market. This dump doesn't look like the one in the movies. Really, Mr. Grady, do you have to compare everything with home? Use your imagination. Let it, let it come to you. The camels coming in carrying new slaves for sale. The slave dealers cracking whips. 
Can't you see it? Say, that's pretty good. Did you read it somewhere? Oh, forget it. Just forget it. I gave up after that. Frank Grady was going to be Frank Grady, and that's all there was to it. I tried to slip away, be alone for a minute, but he was just like a leech. Uh Uh-uh, teacher. Better stick with me. You don't want to get lost, do you? I was just about ready to call it quits, go back to the ship, find a good book to read, when... The next point of interest is El Kassir, the Sultan's turret. The Sultan's turret? That seemed familiar. I was certain I'd heard that name before. Then it suddenly hit me. The sailor. The dead sailor. He'd said, message, Sultan's turret, 15th step. Oh, I could have kicked myself for not remembering for that policeman. It was a big stone tower, broken down in places, but it was solid and real. Proof that I hadn't imagined that poor man. My heart was simply pounding. I couldn't wait to get inside. a watchtower by the Sultan Amit Kassir. Now, the upper half has been condemned as unsafe, but... It was dark inside, just little lights near the showcases. I looked around for the steps. In one of the corners, I saw them curving upward. They were roped off. I edged away from the others, praying Frank Grady wouldn't see me. I slipped under the rope, started up. One, two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It was very dark, only a glimmer of light. I waited. It felt as if there was someone else there in the shadows. Then a tiny white something caught my eye, a piece of paper. I picked it up. I looked at it. There was writing. It said, Ship Six. That's all. Well, (gasps) Miss Gideon. Mr. Harun. I have been waiting for you. Listening to By Route by Sunrise, tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. You can't shortchange today's students in their classrooms and hope that tomorrow's leaders will be up to the international competition. Give a thought to how well today's schools can train tomorrow's leaders. Join your local groups fighting for better schools. And now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Mary Jane Croft, starring in tonight's production of Beirut by Sunrise, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. not mean to frighten you. Don't, don't come near me. All right. What are you doing up here? I too like forbidden places. I knew the tour would arrive here about this time. Fortunately, I finished my business early, so I came to meet you. Is that so frightening? <sighs> no, I guess not. I thought you might like me to show you what I know of the city. Uh, You are all right now? Oh, yes, I'm all right. Mr. Haroon, was there anyone else up here just a minute ago? No. You and I are the only curious ones. Oh, no. No, there had to be someone. I've got proof. Proof? Hey, teacher! Mildred! Where are you? Hey, we're leaving! Uh, Mr. Grady. Well, shall we go down? No, please, let's wait till they go. I've had just about enough of Mr. Grady. Teacher! They will think you are lost. Oh, let them. I've got to talk to you, Mr. Haroon. Somebody, I've just got to. I know of a charming place. We will talk there. (laughs) 
We waited for the tour to leave. Then I took hold of Mr. Haroon's arm and we started down those awful stairs. It seemed like hours to go through the darkness and I shuddered all the way to the bottom. Then we were out in the sunlight and I felt like breathing again. We walked, gave me a chance to pull myself together. Finally, we stopped in front of a little place. Didn't look like anything from the outside. And Mr. Haroon opened the door and we went in. What do you think of it? Oh, it's just charming. This garden, it's the Arabian Nights. It must be very old. They say Omar Khayyam once visited here. Oh, well, you can tell. Come fill the cup. And in the fire of spring, your winter garment of repentance fling. The bird of time has but a little way to flutter. And the bird is on the wing. You know the Rubaiyat. Some of it I remember. Oh, I'm dreaming again. Just couldn't be real. Oh, it is real, all right. Uh, Miss Gideon, back at the Sultan's turret. What? You said you wanted to tell me something. Oh, yes, that. Well? Well, it's been so strange all day. First I see beauty, then death. Then it was gone. And suddenly terror again. And now this beauty, all without warning. I want to remember this place without anything to spoil it. Please take me somewhere else. Aren't you carrying this romantic theme a little too far? What, what do you mean? I mean... All right. I will take you someplace a little less overwhelming. Look, it's almost sunset. Funny I didn't realize it was so late. Just this place, and we will go back to the ship. Oh, up these stairs? If you please. Oh, the view. There's the harbor. There's our ship. We'll make it back in time, won't we? In here, Miss Gideon. Oh, it's a nice room, but I... Oh, the view from this window. It's lovely. Is that what we came to see? Not exactly. <sighs> Mr. Haroon, I don't know whether I'll be sad or glad to leave Beirut, but this time with you has Miss been... Gideon. Yes? Time is growing short. We must discontinue this. I know it's this. growing short, Mr. Haroon. Short the time, but long my memory for that garden and the moments there. I am not sure whether you are extremely clever or extremely foolish. Foolish? Oh, no, Mr. Haroon, please, not foolish. I thought you realized what I truly feel. This place is not romantic, Miss Gideon. You can stop it now. Stop it. You have caused me a great deal of trouble, and I am finished playing games. Mr. Haroon. What happened on the stairs of the Sultan's turret? You are going to tell me, Miss Gideon. What time is the meeting? Meeting? The masquerade is over. Do not force me. You know. I don't know what you're talking about. Death and terror, Miss Gideon. Come oh. here. You recognize <gasps> this? The sailor. The dead sailor. You murderer! You murderer! Stop! Stop! I ran, just ran. The vision of the dead man on the floor of the room still in my eyes. And Mr. Haroon was coming after me. He was going to kill me. I knew he was going to kill me. I didn't know where I was or how to get back to the ship. And it got darker and darker. The streets twisted and turned in front of me. A shadow after shadow, growing bigger and bigger. I had to get to the ship, but I didn't know how. Oh, my leg. Oh, a dirty, ugly man appeared beside me. I backed away from him. He slithered after me, and then I felt my back against a wall. Walls all around. There wasn't any way out. I could feel a scream gathering in my throat. I saw a door just out of reach. I edged toward it. It was a, a big room, dim and evil smelling. There were people, but they didn't pay any attention to me. They were watching a dancing girl weaving through a greasy yellow light. 
I saw another door and slid along the wall toward it. And he was there, following me. Keep away from me. Keep away from me. Mildred! Mildred! Frank! Mildred, hey, hey, teacher. Oh, Frank! Frank, Here, here, over this way. That's it. There. Hey. Oh, Frank. I'm never so glad to see anybody in all my life. Well, what happened to you? I've been looking all over. You know, the ship's almost ready to leave. He was going to kill me. Who was going to kill you? That horrible, terrible Mr. Arun. Let's get to the ship, please. Uh, no, Hurry. no. Wait a minute. I, I got to know what time that drop is. Drop? The message you got at the Sultan's turret. I, I know you got her. You wouldn't have ditched me. What? The film. Documents on the film, teacher. A little white slip of paper tells place and time, and you got it. Now, you forget your act, and I'll forget mine. Sailor? He said tell it to... To me. To Frank Grady. He was my contact. You got in the way. No, no. Come on, now. Give me that paper. Let go! Look, teacher, give me that paper or I'll kill you. I mean it. What? Miss Gideon? Miss what? Mr. Haroun, don't touch me. No, it is all right. Everything is all right, I assure you. All right? Where am I? A pilot's launch, Miss Gideon. I'm escorting you back to the ship once more. Policeman. We are sorry you had to go through as much as you did. It was imperative to find out which one was the spy, Mr. Grady or you. Spy? Dealers in state documents, collected and sold to the highest bidder. We knew someone would meet the sailor. Oh, I see now. Then you didn't... He was stabbed in a street brawl before he could reach the ship. Unfortunately, you complicated things also for us as well as Mr. Grady. I am sorry I had to treat you roughly at the house on the hill. Because you thought I... And I thought you... <laughs> oh, Mr. Haroon, I'm so glad I was wrong about you. I don't mind anything now. I am staying here in Beirut. I wish you a pleasant trip and bon voyage. Perplexed no more with human or divine. And tomorrow's tangle to the winds resign. Thank you, Mr. Haroon. Thank you very much. Suspense, in which Miss Mary Jane Croft starred in tonight's presentation of Beirut by Sunrise. Next week, the story of terror in the streets. We call it The Whole Town Sleeping. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Anthony Ellis. Tonight's script was written by Mr. Richard Chandley. The music was composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Featured in the cast were High Aberback, Jack Crucian, Don Diamond, and Ben Wright. Thursday nights, The Whistler brings mystery on the CBS radio network.